So how we find these relevant rules? Where basically we want to find rules that their support have a very high number and the confidence is also high. Of course, the lift also as well, right? Um, so high support implies that the combination is is well supported. Why? Because let's say if we have a high confidence in a rule, again, so the milk and diapers imply beer has a confidence of 90%. But what if the support of the rule is very low? What if the support of the rule is 1%? It means that the amount of data we use to calculate the confidence is very small. So our probability is not going to be very well supported. It's, it's going to be calculated over, over very few cases. That means that the probability is very likely that it's just uh, noise or it has a, a, a lot of variance, right? Let's say we have uh, just 10 transactions that contain the, the item set. It means that, that we calculate this 90% just, just within a set of 10, tr 10 transactions. That is a very low number, right? But in the other side, if, if, our, if the confidence of the rule is 90%, but also the support is high, let's say 40%, which is a very okay number, it means that we calculate the probability of buying beer given milk and diapers over a very uh, big set of transactions. It means that it's very likely that that probability is uh, real. It's the real probability, right? Because it's based in a in a huge sample from the data. Um, so here are some examples of rules. Uh, so it's very important to know that when we have one frequent item set, again, milk, diapers, and beer, we can create several rules out of the same item set because all the rules are, are binary partitions of the same item set. Okay, so we can, there is a, a way to calculate a bunch of rules from one frequent item set, right? Um, also note that all of them have the same support because the way we calculate the support is putting together all the items of the rule and given that in these cases all the rules come out of the same item set, they're going to have the same support but different confidence, right? Because the confidence depends on the items of the right side. Um, okay, so how we find association rules? The first thing we, got, we have to do is to find all the frequent item sets. And then for each frequent item set, we must do the following. We need to generate all the rules S imply X minus S. Don't worry if you don't understand this. We, now we're going to see one example. It means that uh, we need to generate all the rules going over all the non-empty subsets of X. And then we can calculate the confidence of each of those rules. And after that, the support, and we can exclude all the rules whose confidence does not satisfy the threshold. Okay? So the, the main problem here, we're going to see that the hardest part is to find the frequent item sets. Because the, the, after having all the item sets, this process is straightforward. So how we generate the rules out of one frequent item set. For example, if we have the item set I1, I2, and I5, then we must create all the non-empty subsets, right? Which are six, I1, I2, I5, and all the possible pairs. And uh, so then how we generate all the rules X, S imply X minus S. So well, the first one could be I1 implies I2 and I5, then the same with I2. So notice that we are going over each of the non-empty subsets, creating the rule, right? Then we have the I5 and implies I1 and I2, and so on, right? So we could create six association rules out of one frequent item set that is here, okay? So what is the item set lattice? 
it is basically showing us all the possible combinations of item sets depending on the amount of items we have in the transactions database so if we were to analyze all the possible combinations of item sets to see if they are frequent we will have to go over 2 to the m minus 1 possible item sets so we can we can say that the, the naive approach it could be it, to find the frequent item sets could be to go over all the possible combinations and then discarding the ones that are not frequent but this number is huge so it's, it's, it's in, in practice it's not possible so the main idea of of the algorithm that we're going to see here is we are going to prune the item sets based in the monotony principle which is basically that if if an item set is frequent then all its subsets are going to be frequent okay so it means that if we have one item set that is contained inside another one but if we know that the bigger item set is already frequent frequent then of course the subset is going to be frequent let me go to say it in, in the in the inverse way and it's going to be easier to understand which is called like the anti-monotony so if an item set is not frequent then all its supersets will not be frequent why because imagine i'm saying that rice and milk are an item set that is not frequent it, it means that if you count all the transactions that contain milk and rice you're not going to reach your threshold so if now we add another item set to the list for example milk rice and honey of course it's not going to be frequent either right because we, you are basically adding a, another restriction basically uh, in other words the, the more items you add to one uh, one, one item set um, then the frequency is, is, is going to decrease okay so how we can use this to prune the item sets we are searching uh, is basically after we detect that one item set is not frequent let's say we detect that the item set a and b is not frequent we know that all the sets that could contain it are not going to be frequent either so here we could prune them out right and we we don't we don't have to go and count the frequency of all these item sets that contain the infrequent set we form here so the vanilla algorithm to find frequent item sets it is called the a priori algorithm and it's from agrawal 94 and the idea is the following you basically the algorithm tells that while there are no more frequent item sets we need to generate all the candidate k item sets starting from the k minus one frequent item sets so remember that k item sets means that we have item sets of size k and uh, this iteration is going to start with k equal equals to one so in other words we we're going to find first the item set of size one all of them as candidates okay and then we are going to prune all the ones that cannot be frequent and then we are going to count the frequency of the candidates uh, of, sus of size k right so uh, don't worry if you don't see with this algorithm the, the whole picture or it's not very clear i'm sure that after we go over one example you will understand this very easily so and then the last step is like we we will generate all the frequent k item sets basically by selecting the ones that surpass the threshold of the or the minimum support so this is going to be the the example we are going to analyze in the next uh, video